All right, we're here with Kendrick Nunn, a.k.a. Uh, Nunn Better. You got the four-time high school basketball state champion in the state of Illinois. That's four-time, four straight. Horizon League Player of the Year, NBA Summer League first team, NBA record, that's a record, for most points in the first five NBA games by an undrafted player. First undrafted player in NBA history to record multiple Rookie of the Month awards, Fastest rookie in Miami Heat history to score 500 points. And of course, last year, NBA All-Rookie First Team. K Nunn, appreciate you taking the time, man. Welcome to the Long Shot Podcast. Yes, sir. Appreciate you, bro. Thanks for having me. Of course, man. This one is uh, this one's well overdue. I've uh, been meaning to have you on for a while, but I actually I want to take it back a little bit. Obviously, you know, many people know us now as teammates, yeah. but uh, you know, we go back a little bit further. I remember playing against you in college. I was at Michigan, of course. You were at at Illinois, yeah. and you know, I was just talking to Davis about this. Looking back, and you know, your game has changed so much since then. I remember. Early on in your career, a lot of your shots would come through catch and shoot. They had like the one play where they'd like pin down for you in the corner. You get to your left. Yeah. Uh, but other than that, you were a lot of it was like residual action. And now here you are, you know, fast forward senior year, Oakland. I'm watching you give, uh, you know, Michigan State 40. I'm watching you kill the G League. And then, of course, you break onto the scene. Can you just talk a little bit about the development of your game and how you've now really turned into an elite three-level score? Yeah. I mean, it goes all the way back to uh, even before high school. Man, I've been getting buckets for years, bro. <laughs> like, um, shit, hey, you, like middle school days. Let them know. And, <laughs> and them days was like, I couldn't really dribble that good, but somehow I was putting the ball in the bucket, you know what I'm saying? It was just all straight catching shoots, like you said, like threes, layups, you know what I'm saying? I was I was always faster than everybody, so I was get by people and get laps and stuff like that. But my game, my development has been it's been huge, bro. Like just over the years, I've just been in the gym just constantly working on the things that I know that I need to work on. You know what I'm saying? And I think um when I got around college, uh when I was at Oakland, that's when I really developed um, some like ball skills you know what I'm saying like passing dribbling like that's when I really developed that and it and, and I took it and ran with it and it just made my scoring more elite yeah talk a little bit more about Oakland because you know you in theory people think you know you you go down a level you transfer down a level but for you like you have this unique opportunity where the keys are yours, basically. Like it's it's all things go. If Oakland's gonna win, it's because K9 is putting the ball in the basket. And uh -huh. you know, you described it the best. Like people now just know you as a bucket. Like you can just get to it. But yeah. did did playing at Oakland and having that responsibility to basically just be a scorer help you a lot in, in developing that that skill? Because I think scoring and, and scoring in that fashion, you know, getting buckets and bunches is truly just a skill that you either have or you don't. I mean, I, it, it definitely is. But um, I think it's when Oakland is when I really had put myself on a map uh, when I show my talents to the world. But even going back to Illinois, like before I left there, I was, I mean, like junior year, I was averaging 15, 16, and 5. So I always had that uh, natural ability to score. Then when I got to Oakland, I had red shirt the first year I was there. And I took that year so seriously, bro. It was like every every practice was game time for me. So that's when I was working on my game and practice during that red shirt year. And, I, and pit, uh, the team knew like what I was going to do going into um, my last year because I was doing it every day in practice. And that's where it really started. Yeah, so you have a breakout. Well, not a breakout. Like you said, you were averaging 15 at Illinois, but you take your scoring to a completely different level. I think you're, what, second in the country in scoring as a senior? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, and, and still, you know, draft night comes around, you know, similarly to me. I mean, you had a way better chance of getting drafted than I did. <laughs> uh, but sure. you still don't hear your name called. Right. At that point, is it like, you know, you you probably at that point felt like, man, like I, I've proven that I can do this. There's still people saying that, you know, not not good enough, can't do it at this level, whatever. 
is it just adding to the chip at that point of like, all right, well, wherever I'm going to be, G League, you know, preseason, whatever it is, like I'm just going to go kill and do what I've always done. Yeah, I mean, that's that's the mindset I had to have, bro. Like, like my senior year at Oakland, I was number two in, in the nation and scoring right behind Trey Young. Like, I was averaging like 26, I think, something like that, 25, 26. And, I mean, I displayed a lot of my skills. I was passing the ball, you know what I'm saying? And at Oakland, we really had so, a nice team, bro. But the thing about it was we had, nobody really played any defense. Think about it. We had three all-Horizon all League players. It was me, Jalen Hayes, and Martez uh, Walker, all lefties. You know what I'm saying? Yep. We was all bucket getters. <laughs> so, I mean, just going into that year, it was crazy. And playing with them guys – it was it was crazy too. Like at Oakland, we was, we would have a starting line with all lefties, bro. I've never been on the team like that, and we was hard to guard, so we were just running up on people. But the thing was, is like we didn't play that much defense, so we had like a five hundred type season. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, so <laughs> that was that. As a uh, as a fellow lefty, I really appreciate that you guys had a lineup of lefties that were just giving people buckets. Um, so so like Duncan says, you go undrafted, uh, yeah, bro. and then you and then you go to Golden State, play for Santa Cruz in the G League. I'm always fascinated by this, and Duncan's talked a little bit about this too. But it's almost like I'm curious to get your opinion on this. It's almost like sometimes going undrafted can be a benefit in the sense that you then get to choose where you go. Yeah. I'm curious if you felt that way and then why you chose uh, Golden State. Yeah, bro. I was I was so pissed because, like, even my coach, even Coach Campy was feeding me, like, we're going to get you in the lottery. Like, you're a lottery player. You know what I'm saying? Like, okay, I'm getting drafted this year. Number two in the nation. You know what I'm saying? Hey, I let the chips fall where they are. Come draft night, I'm waiting around, I have a draft party and stuff like that. And, um, didn't get the call right, so it was getting down to the around the last picks, and I got a call from the Warriors, and they wanted to sign me to a, a non guaranteed deal. So that's when I signed with them, and it was kind of it was beneficial, like you said, because I get to I get to move wherever I wanted to. I wasn't locked down with the team, you know what I'm saying. So I got I got to be able to choose a little bit. So I signed with the Warriors and uh, went to training camp with them. And from then, I was I was just focused on trying to make that roster. You know what I'm saying? As a as a minimum guy, they had a roster spot as well too. So that was it played to my advantage a little bit. But then from training camp from the Warriors, I got waived then too. So it was a it was a it was a long journey for sure. So you you go to Golden State. You know you're you're in camp with obviously you know that that roster has so yeah. much talent. How are you in a camp like that? And I've also heard that, you know, Warriors camp or just really other NBA camps aren't exactly what it is in Miami. All I know yeah. is is Miami Heat camp, you know, where we're competing and playing. On the day in, day out of, of that preseason, that camp, are you getting opportunities to, like, go up against these guys and prove yourself? Or is it more so just, like, not really those, those moments where you can really showcase, like, man, I, I deserve to be on this team? Yeah, it was um, it was a definitely a different type of training camp because we would go the first week. We would do um, we would do tour days, but they were very light. You know what I'm saying? We had Steph, Katie, Clay, Draymond, Livingston, uh, a bunch of guys that was on that team, a bunch of veteran guys, and so it was light. The training camp was real light. And the second part, the second half of the day, uh, the second practice, we would go back and we would scrimmage a little bit. And that's where you get a chance to play against uh, other guys. And we definitely had some scrimmages and um, you get to show yourself some, some, but when you're playing with those guys fresh out of college, I was a bit passive, you know what I'm saying? I wasn't as, as aggressive. Right. KD telling me to be myself. But I'm on a team with Steph Curry, you know what I'm saying? I always looked up to Steph, so I'm trying to get him the ball. <laughs> it was crazy, bro. But we um it was some it was fun. I got to show some some spurts of my game, but I didn't I don't think I've got to show the full 
my full package because the games were so short and it was it was real spot. You know what I'm saying? So you end up going and playing in Santa Cruz, uh, where once again, you know, we played against each other a bunch. I was in Sioux Falls, you were in Santa Cruz, and I think some people don't even realize this. I mean, I think you averaged twenty a game in the G League, but you still were coming off the bench for that team. So how did how did that help you? kind of once again hone this skill of just being this scoring punch and this scoring spark because you know you you're in camp with the Warriors you get sent to to Santa Cruz and I got to imagine for you like I mean let's be honest you you should have been starting on that team like you're more than good enough to be starting but they still have something slated a role slated for you different yeah but that was tough bro that was very tough for me because coming from training camp like we would play one, like all the guards, we would play ones after practice. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. All everybody, all the guards. It'd be like five or six of us. And I would run the whole ones, you know what I'm saying? Each spot type type shit. And then to get waived and have to go to the G League after that, I'm like, damn. Like, did they just see what I'm doing to these people? Like, <laughs> like I'm really not supposed to be down here. So <laughs> It was kind of crazy, bro. And then, and then when I got there, they were telling me that I'm not starting. I'm coming off the bench. I'm hold on, like who are you gonna start? <laughs> like what's going on, bro? So that was that was hard to take, but I accepted that role and I just I just controlled what I could. And and every time I got on the floor, I just I just controlled what I could and just played my type of game. It's so interesting for me to hear you say that, Kendrick, because. For me, like I remember I was at the summer league in Vegas in 2019 uh, when you were with Miami. So that following that following year. They call that they call that Canaan Summer League now. He, yep. he took over that summer league. That's what they call it now. <laughs> yep. Canaan Summer League, first team all summer league. Uh and, and I think to the common fan, which I'm grouping myself in, it was kind of like you had came out of nowhere that summer. Like I remember right. in one of the games in the small gyms there in Vegas, you had like 30. Uh, game-winning steal against Duncan. And I were talking about this for, before. I think it was Utah. Regardless, you it was like you burst on the scene out of nowhere. But hearing you talk about this now, it's like these whole two years before that, it's like you're killing it in Oakland, and then you're killing it in the G League at Golden State. But it's it's so under the radar. Mm-hmm. I'm curious, how impatient are you in those years leading up to that? Is it is it like trusting the process and knowing that that opportunity is going to come, or are you just itching? for that chance and and I assume there's some frustration that comes in. Um yeah man a lot of patience for sure bro a lot of patience bro because every night I'm going out and doing what I do you know what I'm saying every night consistently for some years so I just had to be patient with like some opportunity is going to come sooner or later from somewhere and I just constantly told myself that to stick to the process, stick to the grind, and the opportunity is going to come. It has to come. That's what I just always told myself. I, I just fed myself that that positive, that positive talk, and uh, it worked out for me. As you said, the, the opportunity uh, definitely came, and kind of in a unique way in that I think it was what, it was the last day of the regular season of that year, yeah. uh, our first year as, as pros that – the Heat signed you to a, a, a multi-year deal. I think at that point it was pretty much non-guaranteed. Am I right? Yep, non-guaranteed. Um, but like you said, it, it was a chance. And then, you know, from there, you and I are kind of like reintroduced. We we spend that entire summer leading up to Summer League in Miami. Yeah. And if there's one thing I remember from that summer, it's that you were absolutely killing people in open gym. <laughs> like, it, like, First of all, our, our schedule that summer, as I know you remember, was crazy yeah. in that what they had us doing. Like we were we were just working hard, um, not crazy in a bad way, but just like it was just every single day. Yeah, and it was putting it out. So. Yeah, I think between the three of us, uh, myself, you, and and Yante, like we we were loving it, uh, playing a ton of pickup, you know, lifting, conditioning, everything. Like, and it was all gearing up for this summer league. And then, of course, like for me, I just remember thinking when you were killing in summer league, like this is nothing new. Like I I just watched him kill people in open gym, like NBA players in open gym in Miami for two months straight. Like, of course he's going to go and have 30 and then to see everyone else being like Kendrick Nunn, Kendrick Nunn. It's like at that point, 
do you view that summer league as like this inflection point of like, all right, people are starting to notice, like people are starting to put some respect on my name? Yeah, I think um, the first, remember I played, uh, I went to summer league with the Warriors for the first time. Yeah. And I was killing, bro. Like, yeah, we played was, you guys the first game. Yeah. Yeah. I was can I remember Bam played summer league then. Yeah. So, In Sacramento. Yep, D. Jones, I remember. And uh, we took a dub from y'all. Like, yeah. I, I needed that. <laughs> so <laughs> You had a light 20, too, a light 20. <laughs> yeah, so I was – I had a great summer league the first year. Then I'm coming back for the second year. I'm like, oh, this is going to be some cake. Like, I've been here before, and, like, I've been putting in hours the entire summer leading up to it. So I'm prepared. You know what I'm saying? So then going into it, it was just it was just so much easier and then like playing with you guys up until then the chemistry was just there so we was just running through people yeah i also remember after summer league once again leading up to the season uh you and i basically in, in the same regiment of, of what we're doing and you know i, I would always try to go back and, and get shots at night and I remember coming back being like, man, I'm, I'm the only one here. Like, no one else is doing this. And I'd get there and, and k Nun is, is like already getting shots up. Or like, I'm finishing my workout and, and k Nun's coming in. And it's like, it, it was then that I realized like, man, like this dude has incredible ability, but like, he's earned this. Like, this has been like hard work and crafted. You yeah. know, like people, people just see you put the ball in the basket and, and they say, oh, you know, he's a natural scorer, this or right. that. Right. But... I, you know, I want to take this moment to just like give you the credit that like you earned, like you put in the hours upon hours, like this stuff doesn't just happen. Um, so just in, in, in talking about your work, how has that then, you know, you go into that your first year really in the NBA, how did that really serve that summer and that whole off season serve as like a springboard for you really coming onto the scene and, and really taking the, the league by storm, honestly, in your first year? Yeah. I mean, bro, like you said, bro, I put in a ton of hours to be able to perform the way that I do. And um, it's just preparation, bro. That's all. And um, we had a, a, a great summer going into summer league. And then after summer league, we put in more work to be ready for our first season in the NBA. And and it just comes it just comes from from putting in the work that that what gives me confidence you know what i'm saying and once and once you have that confidence you feel unstoppable so that's where it comes from i want to ask both of you about uh miami and just being in that setting because there's a long history of undrafted guys who have had success there and you two are now part of that list I'm curious what you attribute that to. Like, do you guys, is it the developmental program there in Miami is, you know, top notch? Is it that they know that they can lean and believe on guys like you? What is it that you guys think, you know, uh, when you find yourself in Miami, when you're looking at that list of people who have had success, what is it that leads to like that belief in yourself? It's like, oh, I, okay, I can do this too. Yeah, definitely. You definitely believe in yourself. First, uh, first and foremost, to be able to accomplish the things you want, and then, I, then give credit to the the uh, Miami Heat scouting staff and and front office for for seeking guys like myself and Duncan. You know what I'm saying? That's real under the radar, but hardworking guys that has talent. You know what I'm saying? It's it's hard to come by, and we're we're one of the few um, to have that, and it's just a uh, just a super honorable position to be in, you know what I'm saying? To have that opportunity as well, and then to flourish and to flourish in it as well too. So it's just a testament to all around uh, myself, the people around me, the the Heat staff, and and front office and everybody. Yeah, I, I think K Nun uh, says it well in that it's it's like multi layered, right? In that it's it's not just one thing. I think it's the organization in and of itself is like has the stability to go out and, and see guys and find value in guys um, and, and have guys like fill specific roles. But then also 
you know, like the, the coaching staff to develop, uh, you know, play to people's strengths and then also give guys like us, you know, who didn't have their names called on draft night opportunities. You know, there's a lot of, and I'm not calling out any specific franchises or organizations or anything like that, but there are a lot of places where I think teams feel obligated to play the guys that they draft or play the guys that they pay money to, a lot of money to. I think, you know, Kanan, I don't know if you can speak to this as well, but like one thing I always knew in Miami is like the guys that are going to help the team win are going to be on the floor. Like, and that was regardless. Yeah. Um, you know, you look at last year, both Kanan and I started early on in the year. Two, We had two undrafted guys in the starting lineup. And I just don't think there are a lot of organizations that – that do that just because of maybe the optics or whatever, but like they're just strictly results based, like whatever wins, you know, whatever we got to do to help us win. And I think um, like even before the season, uh, me and Spo had a conversation about that. Like he gave me, he instilled confidence in me telling me that we play guys that help this team wins. He told me, don't look at the contracts and think they're going to be on the floor just because they make the most money. It's whoever helps this team wins. Is That's who I'm going to play. He, he told me that flat, flat out. And that just gave me even more confidence. Yeah, no, that's that, that's real, man. To, to hear, to first off, know that there's a track record of success of guys in your shoes, I think makes a big difference, too, in that they have had guys, undrafted guys, come in and yeah. be successful and be given opportunities. Um, Kanan, I, I got a, another question about your mentality in terms of, you know, something that I just find, like, super admirable is how you just show up every single day, uh, just, like, even keel, even demeanor, never too high, never too low. Uh, you know, regardless of what your role is, uh, you know, it's, it's changed somewhat, this year has just been crazy. Uh, but one thing as a team, and obviously I know the coaching staff feels this way too because they they tell us, but like people can always rely on on K Nunn to to be there and whatever his whatever's asked to him, like he'll rise to the occasion. Is that just like a I'm a, I'm gonna always be ready, like just kind of keep that mentality, or is it like where do you where do you kind of gather that ability from? I guess. Yeah. Um, it's hard to say exactly where I get it from, bro, because it's like, I think the base of it is just simply coming from Chicago. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it's bigger things you have to worry about every day living in Chicago. You know what I'm saying? You have to be ready for whatever. You never know what, what will happen. You know what I'm saying? So I think that's the base of it. But then again, like my entire – ever since I've been playing basketball and, and watching basketball, I've had um, – first of all, my dad was a great coach for me. And he, he instilled some things in me to help me be the player that I am. And then I always watched professional – I always watched the NBA and professional athletes. And even some that, that being in Chicago, that surround still, that – comes and talks to me and things like that they always tell me little stuff like that to be ready you never know you know what i'm saying take advantage of the opportunity little things like that it always stuck to me and ever since i was little i just been trying to stack days and days on top of each other great days to, to be the player that i am i think that's where it comes from we uh Duncan kind of glazed over your four state championships in in the intro that we gave you but that is remarkable and that's legendary that's legendary four stuff. straight four for four yeah. just remarkable and that I mean that's like an all-time high school team you played with Jabari Parker yeah. uh I growing up in Kansas City you know Chicago is not necessarily next door but pretty close and I remember always hearing about Simeon and how just dominating you guys were as just a program uh, you were inducted into the, uh, the hall or your Jersey was retired there, which is yeah. a very short list, but I think that just speaks to how, uh, you know, the kind of career that you've had. Can you just speak a little bit about, uh, that program and then your four years there? Did you, did you guys, were there any close games or were you guys just rolling over people for four years? <laughs> it was a handful of close games, only a handful, <laughs> <laughs> but it was some teams in the, um, red South, like you have a team like, uh, crane. You know what I'm saying? That's from the west side. 
that'll give us a run every time. You know what I'm saying? I couldn't name you one player on their team that that was successful in college, but they all played hard. You know what I'm saying? Gave us a run every time. But uh, <laughs> it's crazy, bro, because um, all my four years at Simeon was, man, immaculate. I mean, it goes to back to the previous question. Um, Duncan Nags was how do I stay how how do I stay consistent as much as I do? And um, it goes all the way back to Simeon, Simeon days where you will have a player on the bench who's just as consistent as Jabari and me, you know what I'm saying? But he never got in the game, like not even a second. And you like, damn, why he don't get in the game? Or you'd be like, why does he even playing this hard, bro? Like you playing way too hard. And you never getting in the game. <laughs> and um, in practice, he would go at us every day. So we would have to bring it every day, like in practice, wherever. And I think the culture there, that's where it all started. They, there's a, a winning basketball program at Simeon that they just build players, you know what I'm saying, from the court to starting off. We never, I'm going to say, we never used the weight room at Simeon ever. But we would work out like a body workout. We would go outside and run, you know what I'm saying, around the city for conditioning on a concrete sidewalk, you know what I'm saying? Be out in the grass, jumping jacks, sit-ups, push-ups, stuff like that. <laughs> like a drill sergeant, bro, something. So <laughs> Old <it> school. Was, <laughs> yeah. It was crazy. So that, that that's that's the secret to winning four straight. Yeah, right. right. <laughs> Run around the city, push ups, sit ups. You don't need the weight room. You don't need the squat rack. Yeah, Just knock out some push ups and get to hooping and grind it out while you're in high school. Definitely get started winning culture. We want to try hard to not turn this podcast into just like a heat love fest. But when we've got two heat guys, it's hard. It's hard not to. But hearing you talk about you know, the practice and the stay ready and the mentality in high school, it sounds a lot like what we've come to know is heat culture. I'm curious, and Duncan and I, I've asked Duncan this a couple of times, but we, I, I wanted to save the, the topic for uh, this with you, Kendrick. I'm curious what, because, you know, you guys are notorious for having like these tough practices. I think Duncan's talked about like guys wearing knee pads, like just getting after it. With this year and how crazy the scheduling is, you guys are playing like every other day. I think you guys have played like five games in the last eight days or something crazy like that. What's practice look like now uh, for you guys? Is it toned down a little bit or are you guys still getting after each other uh, whenever you can? Uh, it's toned down because we play every other day. You know what I'm saying? So most of the time... We're taking that, that that day off in between and you just getting work in yourself, whatever you need, you you get into that. Whether that's training table, workout, lifting, whatever you need to do individually, you take care of that in between uh games. But the practices have definitely um have lightened since this uh new season is 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 here. Yeah, it's it's also obviously, you know, the the heat culture stuff, I think the reputation kind of precedes itself a little bit. Um but you know what i think what they've come to expect with us is like you know if we're not going to be doing that in between games which we you just can't be there's just got to be like a super attention to to detail and focus and you know like canon said you know if we're not going to practice like get in and get your work handle your business you know get your recovery get your treatment um and just be like super diligent and on top of it uh just because this year like you said our our schedule is this run that we're on right now, I mean, I, I don't think we've had two days off since the yeah. beginning of January or something. Yeah, yeah. Um, two days is a stretch. <laughs> yeah, so it's 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 been a grind for sure. Um, everyone's going through it in some capacity, but I think just this year in general across the league, everyone's had to adjust a little bit. So uh, it's it's definitely been different. Okay, now I I, uh, I want to ask one thing about last year just in terms of, I just remember you like gaining momentum and, and, you know, all of a sudden you're breaking these records and you're coming onto the scene. And I was kind of doing not something similar in that I wasn't doing those things that you were doing, but like, I felt like I was kind of coming into my own as an NBA player as well. And I had this mentality of like, man, this is crazy, man. Like I'm, I'm playing in the NBA. Like, this is wild. 
I, I'm wondering for you how different it was in that you you know you played USA basketball in high school. You know you're you're on the teams with lottery picks, and you know like you said, you at a point you expected to be a lottery pick, and arguably should have been. Um, for you, is it is it that like man, this is this is dope, or is it like yeah, man, like I'm I'm finally here, like I I'm made for this, I was destined for this. W- which which one, or maybe it's neither, and it's somewhere in between. Yeah, I would definitely say it's it's somewhere in between, bro, because uh, the patience that I had to have was crazy, bro. Like I felt like I should have been in the NBA years ago, but then again, my I, then again, I felt like maybe my game wasn't ready, you know what I'm saying? And then, so I always had that mindset that I'm an NBA player, like since high school, bro. That's what I put into my mind. And um, it's crazy, like when you tell your mind something, you you start to, you believe it, you know what I'm saying? You start to be there, you start to act like it, talk like, you know what I'm saying? Doing the things you need to do to be actually become that. And that's what I did. And um, when I finally got to the NBA, it was just like I took a deep breath, like, shit, I'm finally here. And now the journey starts. And it was definitely surreal for me, bro, to be honest. It, it definitely was surreal. Is there a specific moment in your career that sticks out to you in terms of really serving as a springboard for your success? So, you know, maybe it, it is draft night, you know, where you don't get what you want or, you know, something, a conversation that you've had or some sort of adversity you faced that really shaped your perspective and ultimately helped lead you to where you are today. Yeah, I felt like um, throughout high school and college, I was a good player. You know what I'm saying? I was a, a good player on my team. I was uh, one of the better players on my team to, to help us win and things like that. I had great accolades and awards and stuff like that. But I really felt like my game did a 360 my red shirt year at Oakland. That's when I tapped into a whole nother level, bro. Like the grind was was definitely real. Like I didn't I didn't do anything anymore. I didn't I wasn't going to college parties. I wasn't hanging out with friends and none of that. Like I was really locked in to getting better. And that's when I seen my game change. And that's when I know things are different. And, and what does that look like? You know, you're not playing all year. Like, what is, is that like late nights in the gym on the gun? Is that you're getting working with a manager or an assistant coach? Or is it just you, a, a ball in a rim, like just hours in the gym working on your craft by yourself? It was everything. But it was after practice. It was before practice, getting the workout in with my with the assistant coach. You know what I'm saying? It was after practice, getting some shots up. It was late nights. It could be a Friday, Saturday, Sunday night on the weekend, at midnight, one o'clock in the morning. I'm going in the gym. It was. It was that, bro. Like it was it was nights where I would go to the, I would walk to the gym because we stayed very close. You know what I'm saying? Two five minute walk to, to the uh, our practice facility. It was nice where I would go in the gym and the door to the lights are off, bro. I'm like, what the hell? Like, I told everybody knows I'm coming in the gym. You know what I'm saying? Leave this door open so I can turn the lights on. The door is locked. So it was night. It was, and that happened multiple times. So it's nights that I'm have the gun out in the in the arena with no lights on shooting, bro. <laughs> it was nice like that. And and I think that's where. And like I said, I saw my game elevate. Hey man, find a way, man. No, no excuses. I love it. <laughs> just, just K nine in there, lights off. Don't mind yeah. him, man. He's just getting his work in. I love it. That's splash, awesome. Man. You hear splash with the lights off. <laughs> I think they should implement a mandatory red shirt year in college because it's it worked really well for both of you guys. I think it's so interesting, but it makes sense. Like you get a year extra to develop. I assume also, Kendrick, you get accustomed to the program, like you learn the offense. Things just slow down for you a little bit instead of learn just being the offense. Thrown this it. man was the offense. <laughs> it was it was give Kate on the ball and let him go. There was no offense to learn. <laughs> learn his spots. Learn his spots. Fair enough. Uh, no, nah, Dave, you're you're right. I think 
the separator for the the red shirt year and Ken, I don't know how you feel about this, but it's all about the mentality in which you approach it. For me, it was all right. I have one year with the best resources in the world at Michigan to become the best player I can be in 365 days. Um, I think if you get caught up in, oh man, I'm sick, I'm not playing, or you know this or that, or like I'm just gonna chill or, or do whatever. Obviously, that that's obvious. If you're not working, that'll catch up to you. But I think the the separator is here. Like hearing Kanan say that is is no surprise. Like you watch you watch what he did in his senior year, and it's like. All right. Of course, he was grinding the year before. You know, it's it's like that. Uh, you know, the saying like the season is always going to ask what you were doing that summer. And I think yeah. it's it's times ten with the redshirt year because it's like that season is going to ask you know what you were doing the previous year when no one no one knew what you were doing because you weren't playing on on yeah. game days. So uh, I I just think it's just so important to to have that mentality that Kane Nunn's talking about. And obviously, you, you've had it you know long before. Um, you know, that summer and, and or that that year, I should say, back to, like you said, the, those Simeon days. Yeah, bro. And that's not that's not an easy thing to do, bro. Honestly, if you if you look around, kids had that opportunity before and it, it goes left like 90 percent of the time. You know what I'm saying? So it takes some real discipline to be able to do that. For sure. Um, all right, Kanan. So we got a we got a little segment that we wrap up with. Uh, it's an undrafted segment. So. We're going to give you three different topics. Basically, we want you to pick uh, the the undrafted, the overlooked of each of the topics. So we don't want any mainstream answers. We want uh, the diamond in the rough, if you will. <laughs> so I'm going to take the first one. I want to know uh, Hooper from Chicago that you feel doesn't get enough love, isn't talked about enough, and has some serious game. Uh, I'll have to go with my young fella. His name is Ahmad Bynum. Ooh, he's, uh, I like it. Yeah, he's, uh, he's at Simeon currently right now, going into a uh, senior year. It's uh, actually uh, Will Bynum's nephew. Okay. Remember Will Bynum? Who yeah, played, yeah. Uh, Chicago Will. legend. Yeah, yeah. It's his nephew. And man, this kid is sick, bro. He got, he got all of them. He got everything, bro. He has uh -huh. some game. A mob Bynum. All right. Well, you you just put everyone on notice, man. Nickname is Black Cat. You got a nickname, bro. <laughs> oh, killer. That's when you know it's real. In high school, kids are getting nicknames. That's nice. Black Cat. All right. We'll, we'll keep the eyes out for Black Cat. Dave, go yeah. ahead. What you got? Black Cat is nice. Um, all right, Kendrick. Next one I'm going to ask you is fashion brand. I've heard from an unnamed source. He might be on this call with us. Uh, that you are you are a, a fashionista, so I need to know your uh, your underrated, underappreciated fashion brand. Well, you don't got to hear it from me. This man's on league fits every other day. <laughs> True. <laughs> the game the game speaks for itself, man. All you got to do is look at his IG. Uh, let's see the underrated man. I'm I'm real versatile, bro. I like so many brands, bro. Like it don't even have to be. A mainstream brand, it don't underground brand. Like if it's nice, if I think it's nice enough for me to wear, I will wear. It. Like it could be my friend's brand, anybody brand. I think so give me one though. You got to you got to give us one. I'm gonna go with the uh, up up and coming brand. They just started. Um, they only have a couple things out now. It's called Dollar Sign Junkie. Dollar Sign Junkie is tough. Um, okay. Just it's it's new. You guys should be hip to it. Um, maybe in a couple months. I'm gonna start. <laughs> I'm gonna start putting on some fits, <laughs> putting that together. <laughs> That's such a like condescending. Like oh, no. I, it'll get to you guys eventually. <laughs> <laughs> oh, for real. K9, K9's in the know. They better be sending you something after this little plug. <laughs> oh, for sure. And, and of course, and of course, the one it's um it's not mainstream yet, but I've been wearing it for some years now. Uh, Richeza. That's Richeza, um out of Atlanta. Yeah, that's that's a nice, that's a nice tough, tough brand too. Um, all right, last one I got, and that is NBA City. So I don't I don't want to hear LA, I don't want to hear New York. I want the the road trip that you're low key excited about, where everyone else, man, like, ah, it's just all right. But K9, like you, you like going to to this place. 
Chicago, man. Come on, man. All right, that's fair. <laughs> I'll give you that. I'll give you that. That was, a so- that was an underhand toss. <laughs> yeah, that's fair. That's fair. Even though uh, it'd be freezing, like when we go back, you know what I'm saying? We usually go back around this time, February, March, and it's freezing, but I love going back, bro, just to see the city. All right, that, that, that's a good answer. Um, all right, K9. Well, we really appreciate your time, man. I know you're a, a busy guy. You got plenty going on. So uh, thanks for taking the time, bro. No doubt, bro. Appreciate you having me on this, bro. Dope. Always. All right, my guy. I'll see you tomorrow. All right, <laughs> right, right.